Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Watercraft with another quick inbox review of another ICM twin kit. This one is the Vietnam USAF airfield kit and it includes the Cessna Skymaster and the OV-10 Bronco. Two really interesting aircraft, coincidentally both twin booms and it also includes some personnel. This kit UK price varies from sort of the 50 to the 60 pound mark, uh, which, like the other ICM sets, does represent slightly better value for money than buying the kit singularly. But you do also get these figures, which I don't know if you can get them separately anyway, should you want them. Uh, this one came from Andy Hills, and I know I often mention Andy, he does support the channel. Um, from his store in Bristol but this one really is from Andy Hills because when I launched the buy me a coffee app fundraising initiative he contacted me and said he didn't want to buy me a coffee he'd rather just buy me this so that is incredibly generous and incredibly unnecessary but I want to just publicly thank Andy for that because I, I really do appreciate the support which is why uh, him and the other people that support me get the mentions they do so thank you thank you thank you so much to Andrew Hills absolute hero who supplied this kit to me personally free of charge so without further ado adieu let's look what you get in the box taking the box art slip cover thing off and then you get the flip top cardboard box inside and it's a bit bigger than it needs to be as you can see but it, it's pretty much full to the top so let's, goodness me let's, let's get everything out and we'll start off with the Cessna so here we are this is the Cessna kit 48 scale remember but not very big it's essentially a light aircraft and sorry about the plastic noise let's get this done over and done with I know I could take the parts out of the bags before I start but I kind of like these videos to be off the cuff and the first time that I've actually genuinely looked at the parts and, and this is the genuinely the first time this kit's been out of the bags although I have looked at it in the bags it's always different when you take them out it's such an intriguing aircraft this um, I think my kind of level of fascination for these subjects comes from reading a couple of books and I'm going to take a moment right now to recommend the, these books to you chaps um, A Lonely Kind of War by Marshall Harrison it's not a super catchy title but it is a brilliant book and I'll, I'll get my Kindle account up here you see the the, um, the book art this is A Lonely Kind of War this is all uh, it's a self um, a biography from this guy who flew Broncos and such during Vietnam and it gives you a whole new understanding for these things and the way they were operated and next door to that is Chicken Hawk that one's by Robert Mason another absolutely brilliant book although not flying Broncos or Sky Masters or bird dogs flying Hueys but they did work very much hand in hand and it shows through in those books they're both absolutely cracking reads um, useful for inspiration if nothing else when looking at building these things um, anyway enough about the books let's look at the kit shall we so we've got two main sprues of parts and gosh aren't they covered with all sorts of glorious things look at this so the wings in one piece that's a good start because it's a twin boom aircraft so there's all sorts of opportunity for uh, alignment nonsense isn't there but having a one piece wing helps from the off it's just beautifully beautifully molded that's just a thing about ICM kits of late they always are we've got recessed panel line detail and recessed fastener detail the sort of fuselage or nacelle it's kind of both isn't it it's in two halves and obviously you've got a lot of interior there and then a, a, a load of weapons it looks like let's Give a closer look at these surfaces. It almost looks like the plastic's metallic, but that's just some slight kind of flow lines in the plastic there. 
and then the sort of cockpit area it is beautifully done got um I'll turn it the right way up instrument panel there please focus thank you again all one piece but so nicely done I expect there'll be an instrument panel deco but that's crisply enough molded that you could paint it quite successfully I imagine as far as internal detail on these cockpit areas there isn't a great deal but anyone who's ever been inside one of these type of aircraft there really isn't very much going on to be honest this part here sort of a bit of a some internal detail I don't know for where yet but it, it's actually broken it's unfortunately become broken in, inside the box but I should glue it back together without any bother some seats here and really rather intriguingly a pair of 48 scale M16s down there at the bottom of the sprue I guess there's probably rifle racks inside these things for uh, the inev fairly inevitable shoot downs so that is uh, sprue, I can't see, sprue B I'm guessing this one will be A let's hope so oh it is, yay so this one's a little bit simpler Obviously you've got the lower halves of those wing panels. Um, control surfaces, the tail surfaces. It's so a representation of one of the engines there. So this thing had two engines. It was a twin engine aircraft, but um, they achieved that by putting one engine in the nose and the other engine in the tail of this fuselage cell, which is why it ended up being twin boom. It's a, a neat way of getting two engines worth of power into something whilst maintaining a single engine aircraft's frontal area so probably quite a good performing aircraft and you've got the tail booms here these are in halves and they've got nice long sockety bits to plug into those wing parts a couple of propellers some wheels a few bits and pieces but again it's just absolutely wonderful mouldings It's not Tamiya, it's not Edward. It is a very different style. Edward have a very different, uh, sorry, ICM have a very different style to those manufacturers. It's very unfussy. Um, but the actual standard of this moulding is right up there, trust me. It's, it's beautiful. So that's those two main sprues, which only leaves, in the case of this one, these transparencies. these so the bag on this I don't know if, you, if that's coming through on the video there's quite a lot of scuffing on the bag which always worries me but that hasn't translated to the parts thankfully and again spectacularly nicely done there is a little bit of distortion but I don't tend to worry about that because it's very difficult for manufacturers to avoid that honestly but the finish on these is it's just staggering they're really good There's some of the best transparencies going honestly <coughs> instructions then the o2a skymaster by cessna low cost twin engine piston powered aircraft Two 210 horsepower engines and a 320, so 200 mile an hour top speed. Not bad. As ever, got your colour information on the front. I'm just going to remove some stuff so these can go through. Okay, that's a bit better. Uh, and it's a glossy sort of uh, colour front cover. Let's just move that out of the way for a second. And you start off with. Uh, the sprue diagrams and we've got some shaded parts for, that are not for use there but there are not many and then straight into construction with a lot of very unfamiliar looking parts which essentially construct into a an avionics rack by the look of it Maybe a whole bunch of radios and things which presumably weren't fitted to civilian ones 
then we go straight into popping some windows in uh, they've got these window doors on these things so this internal detail will be quite visible uh, relatively speaking there's your little mock-up piece of engine which is being built up with the firewall and some um, side walls to make also the, the nose undercarriage bay and then we sandwich both of those parts into that fuselage half and the rest of it you've got a cabin floor which you're building up the seats and instrument panel on too and it also then gets popped into that right hand fuselage half 10 grams of nose weight that's going to be a difficult one to call because to be absolutely sure that 10 grams is enough you're basically going to have to build the whole thing pretty much uh, to have some caution there I tend to put more than the manufacturers say always but I also tend to test build even if it's with tape to be relatively you know as sure as I can be within reason that, that enough weight is in there um, you don't have separate nose panels this engine's here just purely because you can see it through the front and I'm pointing in a bit you can't see you don't have separate nose panels so there isn't really if that doesn't end up being enough weight there isn't really a way to put any more weight in unless you taking things off or what have you so I would be careful with that and make double dog sure before you close everything up that you've got enough nose weight in and we go carry on main undercarriage leg goes on the back there and we end end the construction of that nacelle area with the windscreen moving swiftly on the top the wing goes on got some windows in the top of it And we plonk a few aerials on top of that. We go then build the booms and the tail plane and attach them together before attaching the whole thing to the to the underside of that top wing. At this point the lower part of that top wing still isn't fitted as you can see. This is one of those trust the process jobs, but I I would be inclined to not glue that tail plane just have it in position get everything lined up and then glue use liquid cement and apply glue afterwards so you make sure everything's square apply the lower wings as you can see there it's offering the option to drill one millimeter holes this will be for the hard points for the stores a few little bits and pieces some panels landing like covers struts etc going on there and we're adding our wheels and then the pylons for the stores. And then building the weapons and fitting them. So it doesn't say in words what these weapons actually are. Mostly rocket pods. Um, this potentially might be a gun pod of some description. I'm sorry, but I don't actually know. From the books, they mostly carried various types of rockets some that were sort of smoke marker types and some that were explodey hurty types and then there's a sort of a mask layout diagram there so again you've got mask templates for all these transparencies here so you can lay tape over this cut out because you'll be able to see I use Tamiya tape and lay it onto the diagram see how clearly you can see through that tape where to cut so you would simply cut around that and then peel it off carefully as long as you don't cut too hard so that you cut straight through the whole lot you should then be able to peel the Tamiya tape back off again without too much trouble as you can see and then apply your pre-cut mask effectively to the model Given the shapes and everything involved here, it's very possibly just as easy to do it in situ yourself anyway. On to the painting and marking guide then. So the first option here, marking A, is a grey one. It's got some green tips on the uh, fins. 
a black anti-glare panel and I, it, it's not the best illustration but it does have a white upper surface on the wing on the main wing they had this for visibility from above because these guys were beetling around just above the treetops spotting people spotting enemies and relaying that information to the fast movers and the bombers who then came in and did the dirty uh, so that upper wing there is highly visible for them to see the forward air controllers and hopefully not shoot them, run into them or drop bombs on them. Second one is also grey, this one's got some red detail on the fin, again with that white upper surface. There's no information as to the unit on these. Marking C, grey again with the white upper surface and this one's got white details on the fins. And the last one it's Deadly Nightshade. She's just black, all over black, with Lovis red markings. It's quite beastly, isn't it? Red wheels. Go faster wheels. Nice. So here is the decal sheet. Relatively small, but it's not a big aircraft. I can read the stenciling quite happily. And read the names. We do have instrument panel dial decals, so let's come up close for you. I don't know who prints ICM decals, but they're really nice. I'll get it in the light so you can see they're quite thin. Certainly the single colour ones, but yeah, very, very nicely done. Note the armament card there, that goes on the side, and they would write on there with a marker pen what was fitted um, so if you're brave you can, <laughs> you can go in there with a bit of a bit of pencil or something and write on there what, what weapons load you fitted so that's the O2 A Skymaster kit and very very nice indeed it looks very very keen to hopefully get a minute to build this at some point a lovely looking thing really intriguing aircraft to me on to the Bronco then, got a bit more going on here look, a bit bit bigger aircraft, a few more parts, let's get in and have a look at this one. Sprue A. Now in common with the Skymaster, this thing is a twin beam aircraft with a central fuse larger on the cell, but unlike the Skymaster, it's got the wings in a more conventional place, i.e. on the on got the engines in a more conventional place, which is on the wings. But it does lead to this funny little pod fuse large thing which is in multiple parts as you can see here now coming up tighter we have recess detail back here so rivet detail panel lines etc all recessed good hinge detail for the doors on the back there and then we've got some rather exciting raised detail all along here so all this nose area raised detail some of it quite large i'd have to look at some pictures to see if it should be quite that big but so you've got a combination there of recessed and raised detail throughout this here is the lower part of the nose of the pod the cell and this is all recessed and however that might be coming across on camera it's actually really fine and really crisp but it's beautifully done very impressive now, other than that we've got a couple of pylons propeller blades instrument panels um, and the start of some of the weaponry there there's your instrument panel all very crisply molded as usual with ICM very nicely done second sprue this is C Sprucey, and this is the main wing panel clearly again a mixture of raised and recessed 
detail and in fact panel work this time we've got a nice raised area here of this fairing area where the wing attaches we've got raised rivets on the boom area and then we've got recessed detail elsewhere really really lovely stuff and this is the underside parts so just two small pieces for in between here and the larger pieces there and here we have the stub wings Lots of really awesome moulding there, loving it. As I say, the texture, the textures in this wing panel are just lovely. Well, that's capturing the light nicely. You can see these raised strips here and the raised rivets on the booms. Really, really good. Lots of interest. Alright, more plastic bag noises. Oh, I've forgotten these. Let's do these first. I've got a load of B, B2 and B1. So B, B1 and B2 look to have been snipped from a larger piece, probably multiples of the same. There's your tail plane, upper and lower half, and the booms. So the booms. You've got side plates, lower plates and upper plates. The upper plates are moulded onto the top wing as you saw. Um, these are the side plates. Looking like a pair of frog's legs. But again, with that multiple types of different textures and details. You've got recessed rivets, raised rivets, recessed panel lines raised panels, everything, all in one, one moulding. It's quite lumpy, bumpy and ugly, just like it should be. And this is the, the lower plates for the booms. The only thing here is, again, this has got heavily raised detail on it. Um, if the fit of these parts is anything less than almost perfect, you're going to have some major issues with... Um, restoring details or just flat out losing details to be honest we shall see next it's group D all sorts of things going on here looks like control surfaces and cockpit area for the most part but there are other part other things going on here too as you can see lots and lots of parts and lots of quite small ones too And then we've got some smaller ones, so those two are the same and these two are the same, so let's just ditch two of those straight off. So we get two each of these. E times two. You can see wheel hubs, uh, brakes, cannon, cannon barrels, propeller spinner, tyres, probably flaps and then your engine fronts there. That is nice. I've built I built a Revel. Which I think it was a reboxed Academy even. I'm not sure. I built a 72nd Bronco for FX Model World and the um engine fronts were absolutely woeful. Didn't look anything like the real thing. And I spent ages remodelling them. These look a lot better. So two of these, there's a seat cushion there with texture on it. As you can see. Very, very nice. Engine front isn't hollow, those are obviously air intakes on the real thing, but they're deep enough to not look terrible. And there's your little cannon. Stub wings have cannons in them. And this one is W2, obviously weapons. A multitude of different things here. I, I'm not a weaponology person, I don't know just by looking at them what all of these are except to say that some of them appear to be bombs and some of them are definitely rocket pods but hopefully the instructions will tell us more but again some 
super nice moulding going on there. For an out of the box thing, that looks very, very nice to me. Last plastic parts then is the transparencies. I'm not sure that sentence actually made sense. But here they are, and this thing's got the world's biggest windows. Whatever is inside it will be utterly visible. And they are glorious. I hope you can see the clarity of those parts. It's wondrous. A little bit of a mark on there. It's a slight bit of scuffing on these from the packaging. This one's fine, this one's fine. And it's got that sort of bulged windscreen. It's captured that really quite nicely, I think. Also some ident lamps and bits and pieces, but absolutely glorious. Tiny bit of flash around the bottom of that main windscreen. I don't know if I can get the camera to see it. Hopefully you can see it there. Nothing major though. That's those. So, onto the instructions and decals. Again. Again, we've got the colours on the front. And a bit of very warlike artwork. Which is fine by me. Move those out of the way for the moment. As usual then, same layout always. Got the parts, uh, sprue diagrams. A couple of parts marked for not for use, but very, very minimal on that. And then straight into construction with, as ever, the cockpit. Multi-part seats first. Just calling out for some decals on those. So let's see if we can figure what they are when we look at the decal sheet. Oh, we're still on the cockpit. Look at this. It keeps going. Built up in lots and lots of stages. Side panels and side consoles going in there. Some detail in section 18, which is going to be part of the nose wheel bay, I suspect. Radio sets and electronics boxes and all sorts. Very, very nice. Then a bit of framework and a few small parts go into those fuselage halves before trapping the cockpit itself within it. Now, does it mention nose weight anywhere? Maybe you can see from this part of the diagram how there just isn't any space between the bottom of the cockpit and the bottom of the actual aircraft here. So if nose weight is needed, which it is, the only place you can actually put it if you, without sacrificing detail because the nose wheel bay is detailed all the way to the front of the nose is here, just behind the sort of firewall, if you like, of the cockpit area. There's no space there. And it hasn't been mentioned, but I needed to put a lot in the 70 second scale one. So all the wing going together, the cannons going into the stud pylons, stud wings. Lots of control surfaces and flappery. Then main undercarriage getting assembled with along with main undercarriage bays, which is what these big detailed looking pieces are. That gets trapped into the front area of those booms. There it is again for the other one. Left boom, right boom. Boom boom, then fit the booms. Hopefully, the way this has been set out, they should pretty much self-align. You've got the continuation of ribs here. You can see the top of those booms 
the wing shaped parts that should just slot in between the wing parts that are already assembled and then fit the tail plane afterward. Got lights and small parts, wheels and tyres and then fit some struts and then we're into the weapons so I can now tell you what those are. LAU 33s are the twin ones, LAU 69A, Mark 77, some kind of bomb I assume, LAU 68 is the smaller rocket pod, 150 gallon fuel tank, Mark 81 low drag bomb, Mark 81 snake eye, Mark 82 snake eye, Mark 82 low drag and LAU 10A, that is quite the weapons load. And then you've got this massive chart telling you where each of those fit and in what numbers. And in fact, it does set out which marking options use which as well. Awesome work. Finally, at the back, the diagram, and again, the master template as per. Marking options then. Marking option one is for the Navy, it's a grey one, it was, was it Air Defence Grey or something, ADC Grey. This is um, Light Attack Squadron 4 Black Ponies, 1971, I'm not even going to attempt to, to, to pronounce the location, because I'm a chicken. Marking option two is the Marines. This one is green over grey uh, with the white high visibility panels on the upper surfaces. Marine, Marine Observation Squadron 6, 1969. It's got horseshoes on it. The Navy one is a black horse, black pony, yeah. Next up, U USAF. 20th Tactical Air Support Squadron, Da Nang, 1972, and this one has teeth. Grey with the white upper surface again. This one's all about the bombs. And the last one is the Marines again. Green over grey again. There's a couple of insets here marking option four. I think this is actually an optional high-vis high arrangement for for this rather than a whole separate one to be honest it's a little bit confusing but it's got down here for marine observation oh, it might be a separate altogether I'm not really sure it's not obvious honestly because that says it's marking option 4 as well but quite a substantial different set it covers most of the schemes they, they typically wore at that period and it's also got details throughout on the, the colours used for the various weapons so it's quite there we go it's pretty good it's pretty well thought out and everything you need is there so finally the decals then for this a separate sheet entirely for the armaments stands to reason there are quite a few of them and you've got the different coloured stripes which as you know denote various things Stencil information, placard information, it's its all there, it's all very good. I do like to see kits that include this type of stuff for weapons because it just, it perks them up so much when they've got this sort of stuff on them. And for the aircraft themselves, there's a sheet for that. Now this one's got the more traditional type of instrument panel decal where you've got the whole panel which you may or may not like but the, the kit parts are relatively they're not got too much sticky uppy stuff on them so they should go on all right if you want to use them there's that armaments paddle, panel again for you to make notes on prop tip decals if that is your won't they're all included a one piece shark's mouth and, a, and the walkways for the wings as well if you don't fancy masking them and we even have uh, propeller decals as well as usual I find with ICM these look to be beautiful very good quality 
they're not overly garish with the colours for the most part they look really good really good awesome quite the package I think you'll agree so that's the OV10 much more complex much more to it than the Skymaster as you might expect but we're still not finished because in this set we also get some blokes uh, and they do appear to be blokes <laughs> and I think we're okay with calling a bloke a bloke on this channel so I'll continue to do that and ICM figures are brilliant I, they're, they're so so good and you get a selection here uh, spanner wielding mechanics um, and some air crew as well and even some equipment but I've just come up tight you can see when the camera catches up that the detail is really magnificent this is only 148 scale remember they're fabulous so this guy's got a screwdriver this guy's got a spanner Yeah, camera says no. Okay. You can see that replicated there with the colour sheet. And then on the back side of this, a painting diagram for each of these figures. And it's nice and big, so it's easy to pick out the detail and see how you're supposed to colour it in for each of those five included figures. As I say, I don't know if these are available separately. They may well be, actually. They're quite often are with ICM, but then again, they may not be. In which case the only way you'll get them is by buying this set there we go that's the whole lot then and i i don't know i just think it's brilliant for 50 ish pounds a fabulous value for money um and such interesting subjects as well i i, I just i think it's really great that they even made a kit of the sky master alone to this standard um i mean if, if you're feeling really brave um, why not buy a Sky Master and do it in the Red Bull colours, the one that's still flying? Um, really fantastic set. I think the Bronco is a fascinating aircraft, and I'm pleased there's so many kits out there of it now. Um, I will no doubt at some point get one of the other releases of the later ones with the camouflage and the dumps and bumps and turrets on and everything. But all of the kits look magnificent on the sprues, beautifully, beautifully moulded, lots and lots of detail. Um, both of these though with all of the transparencies they've got going will probably benefit with a bit of um edward style assistance i suspect uh like a zoom set for instrument panels and seat belts really is what i'm thinking loads of weapons so there's going to be stuff going in the spares box from this for sure and then the figures just finish it out all i say i really need to do to make this an ultimate package is to supply some kind of base like a piece even if it's a printed piece of card but if a molded plastic PSP base of some sort would be just perfect for these but yeah fabulous package I'm really impressed with it really pleased I've got it and thoroughly thoroughly recommend it ICM kits are right up there with the rest these days um, and produced in the Ukraine they're still cracking them out somehow um, props to them absolutely so again, anyway, that's the end of the review. I think this is fabulous. I didn't quick snip it because it would have just taken too long. But um, I'm going to I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I think they're going to build just as well as they look on the spree because every ICM kit I have built lately does. So, yeah, that's my opinion. <laughs> you don't have to listen. Uh, so, yeah, again... As I said at the beginning, thank you so, 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 so much to Andy Hills for actually just donating this kit to Genesis Designs. This wasn't a, a commercial donation, it was a personal one from him. Uh, so thank you so much for that. If anyone else wants to support the channel at any time, uh, the Buy Me A Coffee link is always down below and you can support from as little as $5. So with all that said, it only remains for me to say, as usual, look after yourselves. Look after each other. Genesis out.